Dr. David Burns have found in his late research on cognitive therapy that depression can be cured naturally without taking any antidepressant drug. We're gonna go through the process about doing so, but first I want you to keep in mind that you're not the only person who's suffering from depression. Taking in consideration that others have gone through the same painful experiences can bring about a relief in the sense of unity. Also, if you're someone who's positive and you think that depression is not for you anymore and that you have worked it out long ago, I think you should reconsider that thought again. In many cases, positive people get so egotistic about their positivity to the point that they start resisting unpleasant emotions like sadness. It's like saying, oh, I gotta be positive. Men are not supposed to cry. I can't fall into the sadness thing, because if I do, I won't be able to maintain my positivity. And ironically, by resisting their mood swing, they get depressed. Sadness is not depression. It's okay to feel down every now and then. The big idea from this introduction is to stop resisting the state that you find yourself in. Even clinging to positive emotions can make you depressed. Emotions are just chemicals running through your body, and those emotional chemicals are not permanent, they are meant to come and go, just like any other experience. Everything is in a constant state of change. And now with that said, let's move on to the cure for depression. First, we need to understand how you got depressed in the first place, and then we get to solve your illness. Think of it as a math equation. If we happen to internalize the rule, we can solve the equation. Let's say that we are sitting in a restaurant, and unintentionally you broke a glass in front of me. Since I'm positive, my reaction would be to laugh hysterically, like if it was no big of a deal. It's funny for me. As for you, you got pissed off by the noises it produced when it hit the ground. Notice that it's the same event for both of us, the only difference is the way we perceive that event. So the rule here is simple, your thoughts create your emotions. You feel the way you do because of the thoughts you're thinking right now. That's why in some guided meditations they tell you to focus on what you're thinking at the moment, to identify what you're feeling. If you're confused about an event that happened to you lately in the day, then your emotional state at the moment could be confusion. Dr. Burns describes how depression occurs. First, we have the event that takes place in the outside world. Second, we interpret the event with a series of thoughts. This is called your internal dialogue. And finally, your feelings are created by your thoughts and not the actual event. In other words, the way you think in any situation will determine how you will feel about it. Now that you've got the rule, let's look at the equation. When you interpret an event as negative, Dr. Burns describes that as cognitive distortion. If you perceive an event as negative, you create distorted thoughts and therefore unpleasant emotions. Sometimes you could be right, the event is unpleasant, it needs to be interpreted that way and we have to be realistic about it. But for people who suffer from mild levels of depression, those cognitive distortions become so habituated to a certain degree that they start perceiving everything in black and white. Dr. Burns cited 10 different cognitive distortions that you tend to have when you're depressed. Let's look at some examples for the most common ones. Let's say that you want to learn improv comedy. You took some classes and after a month you decided to give it a shot and go live. So you go on stage and start cracking the lamest jokes ever since you're nervous and it's your first time. The audience got bored and left. As a result you think to yourself that you have no chance of becoming a comedian or that you will never going to be good at doing anything. This kind of cognitive distortion is called all or nothing thinking. Either I'm good at this or I will never be, even if I put it into practice. Either I'm a charismatic confident guy or I will never be that way. And you can clearly tell that it's all pure nonsense. This type of cognitive distortion is conveying an exaggeration of a negative event. The event itself is negative, but instead of perceiving it as a passing experience, you hold on to the cons. This leads us to the second cognitive distortion. This one is called mental filtering. You take one negative thing in any situation and keep dwelling on it. This video as an example. No matter how much I put the time to make valuable content for my viewers, there will always be that one guy who will filter all the value and leave a negative comment. Instead of saying, okay, let's evaluate this objectively, what did I learn from this video? I learned about something called cognitive therapy, I can cure my depression without taking any antidepressant drug. 
See, at least you learned something. To be honest, I'm not resentful toward those people, cause they are so addicted to negativity that it became normal to them, just as normal as holding a fork. People who perceive reality from a mental filter, no matter how hard you try to convince them that the event is actually positive, they will always find something negative about it. Let's say that you got hit by a car, you're on your way to the hospital, and no matter how much the doctors keep telling you that you didn't get a scratch, you just got dizzy, and you're ready to go home in 3 hours, you keep thinking to yourself, oh my god, what if I got brain damage, and if my brain is damaged, will my girlfriend still wanna go out with me? This one is called jumping to conclusions. This is like exaggerating with your expectations, and projecting to unrealistic conclusions. Since the process of emotion formation happens in a fraction of a second, we have little to no control over it. The good news is, however, even if those thoughts get distorted and you fall into depression, you still have a chance to reconstruct them after their occurrence. You have the opportunity to reframe those distorted thoughts and therefore change your mood. It's scary how one thought can have the power to change someone's life for the better or the worst. David Burns presented us with some practical strategies for dealing with these cognitive distortions. The first step is to start being mindful enough to catch those automatic negative thoughts and write them down. Don't let them buzz around in your head. The second step is to learn precisely how you are twisting things and blowing them out of proportion. And the third is to substitute a more objective thought that puts the lie to the one which made you look down on yourself. If you hear a thought telling you that you are not good at doing anything, catch that negative thought and write it down. Now write a more logical, realistic counter thought to it. Try to find all the logical reasons that convey clearly that you are good at something, no matter what the thought says. You can read that paper every morning before you go about your day, and with time, the subconscious will rewire itself, and instead of weighing you down, your thoughts will start boosting your mood naturally. This is the basic gist of cognitive behavioral therapy. So far we saw three big ideas. The first big idea is that your emotions are created by your thoughts and not the actual event. The second big idea is cognitive distortions. We saw the most common distortions that you tend to fall into when you're depressed. And finally we looked at the practical side of the book, which is to fix those distortions by writing them down and replacing them with more realistic logical thoughts. And with time, your brain will rewire itself for the better.